What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over the X-Men. And really, we're going to jump back over to X-Force Comics. And the reason why, because we are currently working our way up to the next crossover that we are going to talk about on my channel. And that would be the Executioner song. Now, before we are able to properly jump into that crossover, there are a lot of stories that we had to sit down and actually cover before we are able to jump into that crossover. And so we have to jump back over to X-Force once again. Now, at the end of our last video for X-Force, we had saw the return of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, but also we saw the death of Cannonball, who was actually killed off by another character known as Saron. And so as we dive into today's 3 part story arc we're going to see if cannonball is truly dead but also we are going to begin the idea of discovering a new concept that was given to us in the early 1990s by marvel comics the whole idea of the externals but also we are going to begin the actual reason why cable had formed x-force 4. And so getting into the opening pages of today's video, we actually pick up where the last video left off at. The whole idea that Cannonball is killed off. Now, you have Cable and also Boom Boom freaking out about the idea that the possibility of Cannonball being dead. And really, you have Saran telling our heroes, like, nah, this guy is dead. There's no way he survived a stab from one of my wings so unfortunately your man is dead now as soon as you have cable kind of realize in the possibility that cannonball is dead he begins to think back to what is his actual mission why did he come here to form x-force and so now we have to jump back into the past now with this flashback we do pick up many years ago where apparently Cable who came from the future who went back in time to form his own team of characters better known as the Wild Pack. Now we do learn that Domino and GW Bridge and also Garrison Kane aka Weapon X was also part of this team but we're also getting our first look at two new characters who were part of the Wild Pack that will be Hammer and also Grizzly. Now we actually see our heroes attacking a Hydra base and the reason why because they were hired by another organization to steal an item that Hydra had actually stolen from the other organization. I'm going to tell you right now, it was AIM, Advanced Idea Mechanics, who were the ones who actually hired the Wild Pack to steal back what Hydra had stolen from them. Now, something I really do want to talk about is the actual origin of Cable, because at this point in time in Marvel Comics, a lot of fans wanted to know what is the actual origin of Cable. Now, there are some books that we're going to talk about that came out after these books right here that fully explain the actual origin of Cable. Now, with that being said, for the Wild Pack, they don't know much about Cable because they're not like your usual superhero team where you have a team they have a base they come together to solve big time situations instead for cable he's somebody from a different time who came back to the past to complete different missions and when he needs helps on those missions he calls in the wow pack and so they're not really like your usual superhero team. It's really more like they work for Cable to get that money. But once they're able to, you know, take down Hydra and give back the stolen item over to AIM, you then have our heroes go their separate ways. And really, you have Cable go back to his own time. Now we do see Cable going back to his own time, the far future. Now here's the catch. We don't really get the chance to see or learn much about the future. Apparently the future is somewhat safe, but at the same time also a very dangerous place. Now we do see Cable being confronted by a group of robots. And these robots are named after different people. 
Scott, Scott Summers, Jean Grey, Jean Grey of course, and Hank, of course, Hank McCoy. Different members of the X-Men, but Dean goes over to his computer, better known as the Professor. Now, the Professor, the computer, usually has a lot of information about the past to kind of help cable out when it comes to going back in time to complete different missions. Now, you didn't have the Professor tell Cable about the possibility of an awakening of a new High Lord in the past. Now, this new High Lord is apparently, well, Sam Gunthery, better known as Cannonball. And apparently, with him being a High Lord, is something very important for Cable, that he has to go back in time to actually help out this High Lord, Cannonball. But like we saw in the present day, Cannonball was just killed off by Sharon. And so the question is, are we going to actually be able to learn what is a High Lord? And also, how can Cannonball be one of those High Lords? And so as we dive into the next chapter, issue number nine, we actually pick up with Cable trying to rush Cannonball over to the medical lab, hoping to find a way to save Cannonball's life or to see if Cannonball is actually going to be a High Lord. Because apparently a High Lord is somewhere where you have the ability to come back from the worst kinds of injuries. And so you have Cable rush over there. Now for Boom Boom and Domino, really Boom Boom, she's kind of wondering what in the world can they possibly do to save Cannonball's life because of her, He's dead. Like the man was stabbed. There's no way he can come back to life. But you have Cable tell her, I need you to be quiet and just give me some cover. Because right now my goal is to get him to the med lab and see if I can actually save his life. And really, the X-Force team is still fighting against the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. So while you have Cable trying to get over to the Mad Lab, Boom Boom has to cover him. And really, Boom Boom is not doing a great job because she does get overrun very easily by Thorn. But luckily for her, you do have Domino appear. Now, Domino was not really in the earlier chapters in our last video when it came to this battle. And so... This is Domino saying, hey, I'm here now, and hey, I'm going to show you what I can actually do. And she beats down on Thorn. Now, really, the way the story is going, the whole idea of Domino not being there at first is going to be very important at the very end of our video here. Now, you do have Cable being able to go ahead and get Cannonball back into the med lab, but he's not really doing anything to save his life because apparently he was told that Cannonball would start living after he was killed. When his death happens, that is when he will start living. And so this is Cable saying, come on, man, I need you to come back to life. But that is also when you have Cable be confronted by Saran. Now, we also get reminded of the idea that, well, some of the X-Force is fighting against the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants outside the actual building, so the actual base of X-Force. So you do have basically uh, Shatterstar, Siren, and also Warpath working together to fight against the Blob because the Blob is somewhat of a hard character to take down because his durability, but at the same time, they were able to find his actual weak spot, his mouth. Now, you do have Blob just go ahead and jump off a cliff knowing that he'll survive the fall, but it's also Blob saying like, hey, listen, it's three against one, and you guys had just found my weak spot, meaning that I have to get the heck out of there, which honestly, the good thing he did because when it comes to X-Force, they don't really take prisoners. They're more like, hey, you know what? We're going to go ahead and kill you off. So you do have Blob being able to escape just barely. Now, something else I should probably mention is why the Brotherhood is fighting against the X-Force. And it's all because what we saw in our last video. You see, around this time in Marvel Comics, 
you didn't have the brotherhood of evil mutants. And the reason why, because, well, at that point in time, they had just got done working for the government and they were called Freedom Force. You see, in the early days of Marvel Comics, Magneto was the leader of the brotherhood of evil mutants. But then it was Mystique. But then later on, it was actually Toad. But Toad would not take over the team until this point right here in the 90s, just out of nowhere. And his main goal is to get rid of the humans, but he also realized he needs an army. So why not team up with the Morlocks? But the Morlocks said, hey, if you want our help, you have to take out X-Force, but also bring back the person known as Pharaoh, who was basically a prisoner for the Morlocks, but had escaped and now with X-Force. And so that is why you have the Brotherhood and technically the Morlocks there as well trying to fight against X-Force. Now, this is the first time X-Force has gone up against the Morlocks. And really for Cable, it is most definitely not the first time that he had a run in with the Morlocks. And so for Cable, he's all like, you know what? I'm done with you, Mask. Because around his time, Mask was the leader of the Morlocks. Now remember, the Morlocks are a group of mutants who, unfortunately, when they had gained their mutant abilities, it changed their body appearance as well. And so because because of that, they no longer had the ability to hide in the public. And so they all went down into the tunnels of the Morlocks. Now, for Cable, like I said, he's done with Mask, the leader of the Morlocks, because they already had a few run-ins. And so for Cannonball being supposedly dead, you have Shatterstar and also Cable work together to stab Mask. And we're kind of left to believe that Mask is dead. And the same goes for Saran as well, who was killed off by Feral. And so with those two characters now dead, it really shows that X-Force is not playing around. They're not going to take any prisoners at all. But then at the very end of this chapter, well, you have Cannonball walk out the room. He's all like, hey, guys, what did I miss? And for everyone, they're kind of wondering how in the world is Cannonball alive at this moment? Now we have to jump over to, well, the character known as Weapon X. Now for the character better known as Weapon X, his real name is Garrison Kane. Now Garrison Kane is a new character around this time in Marvel Comics. And unfortunately, we don't know much about the character. All we truly know is that he does have a past with Cable. Matter of fact, he was on the WoW pack with Cable in the past in the earlier chapter that we had already talked about. But in a couple issues we already talked about, he had a backstory where he was basically trying to handle a smuggling ring except when he arrived at the warehouse that could be involved with the smuggling ring he finds out is actually the mutant liberation front and of course that group is being led by no other than strife and so when he arrived at the warehouse to shut the place down he had to fight off a few members of that group but then he heard somebody teleporting the group out of there another a character known as Zero. Now, when it came to Weapon X, he decided to follow the other characters through the portal, and it led him and the others heading back over to the main base for the actual team, the base for the Mutant Liberation Front. But when he arrived at their base, he was confronted by Strife. Now, remember, we don't know much about the character, really, no one truly does. But this begins the whole idea of us kind of learning a tad bit more about the character. But now we dive into X-Force issue number 10, and we actually pick back up with Gideon. Now, this is the point where we actually begin to learn more about the character. If you see my other videos on X-Force, I've been saying that we're going to learn more about the character of Gideon down the road in our coverage over the X-Men. Because at first, when he appeared, he was one of the big questions in the early comics for X-Force. Because... He was a very interesting character, but at the same time, we were not getting any kind of information about him. That all changed with this book alone, because this is where we actually sit down and talk about the externals. 
Now, we don't get the full idea what the externals truly are, but we do get a hint at the idea that this is a group of mutants that have lived a very long time. Possibly, they have the ability of immortality, but down the road in later books, you'll have those books fully dive into the actual origin and the whole idea of the concept of these characters. But we do learn why Gideon was was going after Sunspot because they believe that he was the next external to join their ranks. But the problem is Gideon realized that no, he is not the next High Lord to join their rank. He realized it's Cannonball. And guys, remember, Cable said he went back in time to find Cannonball because he was supposed to be the next High Lord. The High Lords are externals and that is apparently Cannonball as well. Now, something else I do want to mention is that while we're learning more about the externals, you have Weapon X, Kane, beginning to learn a tad bit more about Strife, knowing that Strife has been the main mission for Cable for many years. But when you have Strife take off his helmet, he reveals the face of Cable. And so for Kane, he believes that this entire time he has been played by Cable, not knowing in the possibility that strife could be a clone of cable or possibly a twin of cable i'm just pretending like we have no idea what's really happening but we already know the whole story of strife either way so while we're learning about the externals we also have kane trying to learn more about strife now when it comes to the externals, we already know about Gideon, but we're also getting our first look at some of the other externals right now. So for example, there's Saul, there's Burke, there's Absalom, and there's also Nicodemus. And I really hope I pronounce the last two names correctly, but a lot of stuff is happening right now that's building up for the next crossover that's coming very soon. Now, getting back over to X-Force, they're kind of wondering still, what's going on with Cannonball? Now, Cable, he knows that technically Cannonball is an external, but you have Cable say, guys, listen, we just fought the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and the Morlocks as well. We got to make sure the base is actually secure. So everyone else who's not me nor Cannonball, get out there and make sure that everything is okay. But on top of that, go ahead and lock up Thorn, the evil sister to Pharaoh, but also get rid of the bodies of Mask and also Saran as well. We'll deal with the bodies later and use their bodies as a way to send a message towards the Brotherhood, but also the Morlocks as well. But you didn't have Cable sit down with Cannonball and say, listen, man, so you are an external, like you are High Lord. What that means is that you have immortality. You can't die. Like that's the whole reason why I came back in time to figure out what to do with you because I was told that you would be the next High Lord. And you also have Cable tell Cannonball the true reason why Sunspot left the team because Gideon believed that Sunspot was the next High Lord and tried to begin the process of removing Sunspot away from the X teams so that he can be brought in with the rest of the High Lords. But now Gideon knows, no, it's not Sunspot, but he also knows it's Cannonball. Either way, when it comes to Cable, he says, that's the whole truth. Like, that is why I formed X-Force. That is why I came back in time, to find you, to help you, because I knew that you are the next High Lord to be reawakened. Reawaken, had a hard time saying that. But now we have to jump over to Department K. Now, Department K is technically this secret government branch for Canada. And really, they are responsible for the relaunch of the actual Weapon X program. Now, we don't know that just yet, but it kind of is hinted at the idea of why Kane is called the current Weapon X. Now, with all that being said, he still works for them. And when he gets back there, he says, guys, we were right, Cable is bad, 
call up Shield, call up Bridge to tell them they were correct. That cable has to be taken down. Now, apparently, they have a weapon that they can use to bring cable down. But the actual man in charge of that department says no, but they do have somebody else who could possibly help them. And that would be, well, good old Richter. Because if you saw my new mutant videos leading into X-Force, we were told that Richter does not like Cable at all. There's a long history between those two characters. We don't know what the actual history is just yet. All we know is that Cable had did something to Richter's father. But now we have to jump over to Deadpool as a way to wrap up today's video. Now, like I said in our lackable videos, Deadpool was still a very mysterious character. We were still learning a lot about him, but the one that we did know about Deadpool was that he was working for a character known as Mr. Tolliver. And apparently Mr. Tolliver has some big plans for everyone involved in X-Force, but we had no idea what those plans are. But we do learn that apparently he has a spy on X-Force. And honestly, it made a lot of sense who that spy would be. It's Domino. And so you have Tolliver say, I have not heard back from Domino in a very good while. So Deadpool, I think it's time for you to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Domino to figure out why she's not reporting back to us. But this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, see y'all next time. Later.